Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to KSP Geology. In this episode today, we're going to take a look at the Mun and the seven large craters that, uh, that are dotted its surface. And we're going to try and use uh, geology in order to try and find out the origins of these large craters. I think you'll find what I've found very interesting and I can't wait to see uh, how it goes. This is the Helios rocket. The Helios rocket is a multi-stage rocket capable of sending the small lander in the payload bay and the small crewed spacecraft to, to the MUN and land it anywhere on the surface. This is the main vehicle that we will use for exploring the MUN to find the origin of the seven craters around MUN. Helios 3 is the first crewed flight of the Helios spacecraft. Mission Commander Jebediah, Jebediah Kerman with Mission Specialist Bob Kerman would descend to the surface of the MUN in the Northwest Crater, leaving Flight Engineer Bill Kerman in orbit. On the surface, Bob Kerman worked to gather the important surface sample. Jebediah took photos, planted a flag, the crew then, then returned to the lander, rendezvoused with Bill in orbit, and bringing the samples and photographs from the LLV into the CSS, the spacecraft then returned to Kerman to a safe splashdown in the ocean. Okay, detaching ourselves from the lander. You got this, Bill? Losing all motion. Check it over. We are lined up and docked. Houston transmission is docking complete. Transferring from the command service spacecraft to the lunar landing vehicle.
Okay, Houston, beginning descent burn. First descent burn complete. Coasting now. Radar altitude has us at 3,800 meters. Preparing for final burn. In three, two, one. Firing engine. Descent stage down. Firing landing stage. You're deployed. 800 meters per second. 1500 meters. meters per second, 900, 950 meters. 25 minutes per second, 600 meters. 30 meters per second, 400 meters. 20 minutes per second, 300 meters. Right on the ball. Leveling out at 8 meters per second, 130 meters. 5 meters, 50 meters, 30 meters, 6 meters per second, 5 meters per second, 10, 9, 8, 7 meters, 6, 5, 4, contact light, engine stop. Open, uh, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain, Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. We got a bunch of guys about to turn blue, we're breathing again, thanks a lot. Houston, as I step off the lander here at the Northwest Crater, I would just like to say that it's been a long journey to finally take our first steps out on the mud. Here's Dan, this is Bob. I'm looking at the sample here. It looks as though it's made out of solid with breaking particles in it. Uh, should prove uh, rather interesting for the boys back in the lab.
Atlas IV was commanded by Valentina Kerman. It flew rookie astronaut Wallace Gotch and returned Bill Kerman to the to Mount Orbit. Wallace flew as the as the mission specialist. Uh, the LLV landed in the far side crater with Wally and Valentina in, in control. Wally would complete his mission, gathering the necessary samples while Valentina Kerman took video and photographs, as well as planted a small flag. Once all surface tasks were completed, the crew rendezvoused and returned to Kerbin for a splashdown.
okay get together and update, uh, Sample now. It appears that, uh, the sample that I've picked up is by product of, uh, melting and it also shows signs of being produced in intense heat and pressure. As I plant this flag, due to Mars where we safely landed, let's not forget the danger and risk for which we take to reap the rewards of our exploration. Okay, 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 All in all, there were seven crewed Helios flights, culminating in Benjamin Gotch and Wallace Gotch walking on the surface of the Mun at the polar crater. Each mission would successfully bring home a surface sample from each of the seven large craters on the Mun.
So right away, it's great to point out that the samples we see have all three different types of rocks within it. Uh, number one is sedimentary rocks. They are formed from smaller particles that uh, have uh, folded and been forced together. Uh, brachia is an example that we see from our samples. Uh, the brachia is a broad term for a type of rock that has larger angular parts of rocks within it. Uh, and they're all cemented together by smaller particles. Igneous rock is a type of rock that is formed within volcanoes. Extrusive igneous rocks like basalt are formed from lava that has been cooled rather quickly. There is intrusive igneous rocks like basalt that have cooled slowly underground. Metamorphic rocks are rocks where either the sedimentary or igneous rocks that have been forced underground and been exposed to intense heat and pressures to the point where it changes the minerals and the, uh, and the particles within it to a different type of rock. So with that information, we should be able to use these different examples of types of rocks to get an idea about how these craters formed. In the Northwest Crater, it is stated that the sample contains brachia and basalt. Once again, brachia is a type of sedimentary rock where large angular particles can be found within it and it is cemented together by smaller particles. But basalt is a type of extrusive igneous rock. Basalt is formed when lava cools very quickly, causing the particles to appear closer together. As a as a, as a result, I believe that the Northwest Crater is a, volcanic, is a volcanic crater because of the presence of basalt. The far side crater sample is composed of melted byproduct. That has been exposed to intense heat and pressure. This leads me to believe that it is an intrusive igneous rock, similar to granite, with large particles larger mineral deposits. As the, uh, as, the, as the magma cooled, it would produce larger particles of minerals within the rock. And these, are for, and these are required to form deep underground and slowly cool. As a result, I believe that the far side crater is a volcanic crater. The East Crater is once again listing Breca as a piece of the sample. It is also accompanied by melted byproduct. It could be either flow brachia, which is brachia that has been formed when the flow of lava has been interrupted, causing larger particles to, to form in the cooling process. But it could also be impact brachia that was formed after the crater was, the crater was formed. But because of the presence of melted byproduct, I believe that it is quite possibly a uh, volcanic crater. Now the East Farside sample is much more is uh, not very specific but is very clear as to what it is. The East Farside crater is lists that this that the uh, site appeared to be the site of a heavy impact and that it has heavier materials within it. As a direct result, uh, I'm not 100% sure what it means, but it could, but the, uh, it could be that the site is showing signs of impact uh, stress, uh, a form of igneous or a form of uh, metamorphic rock that shows impact stress within it, that is formed at the site of heavy impacts. As a result, I believe that the uh, East Far Side Crater is a cosmic impact. The Southwest Crater is very interesting. The Southwest Crater is stated to be radioactive. I believe that it is uh, the presence of radioactive materials such as potassium, uranium, or uh, thorium within, within the minerals of the material. Now this requires that the material cool slowly to form the larger minerals to gather these, uh, these elements up. As a result, I believe that this is an intrusive igneous rock and 
that the southwest crater was formed as a volcano. The twin craters tell a similar story. The twin crater sample is reported to contain lots of rare elements. Rare elements or rare earth elements are often formed within the minerals in intrusive igneous rocks. At least that is what I found throughout my research. So as a, as a result, I can only guess that the, with the presence of the rare materials within the, within the sample, that the, that the uh, sample was formed as an intrusive igneous rock and therefore the twin craters are a volcano. And finally, it's the polar crater sample. It is recorded to show signs of intense shock patterns, which is consistent with metamorphic uh, shock rock, sh with, uh, with once again the impact shocks shown in metamorphic rocks found around impact craters. This can only mean that, with no other information given to us, this can only mean that the polar crater is also an impact site. In conclusion, a majority of the craters on the Mun are volcanic, meaning that at a point in its history, there was a massive, there were massive caldera and volcanic basins actively erupting, with ancient magma chambers that were cooled and were then later exposed to the surface by upheavals. Two of the large craters were the result of impacts that occurred shortly after the surface was formed. I just want to thank everybody very much for watching in this interesting experiment of a video. Link down below is an invaluable resource that I used. If you want to learn more about geology, I recommend you go to it, geology.com. It, it was very helpful in finding different information about the different type of rocks and the different uh, experience and the different locations that they're found. As well, uh, link down below is the NASA website. If you'd like to learn more about our about real life efforts to return to the moon or explore deeper into our solar system. As usual, there's a link to all my social media in the, in the description as well, with uh, a link to my Patreon if you'd like to. As you notice, some of the Kerbals had different names. Uh, I named them after friends and family, as well as my dog. And, I'd and if you want to have a Kerbal named after you, you can donate to my Patreon, and I will name a Kerbal whatever you want it to, to be named. I've also got my tutorial. If uh, you're just getting started in Kerbal Space Program, I've got my tutorial series. Uh, it's got a nice playlist for you just so that way uh, to help you get started. Once again, I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all have an, had an excellent day today, and I'll catch you all next time.